The two investment guys join us now, and guys, let's get right into this correction. It was a much anticipated correction, a lot of people talking about it. Uh, sure. What was the fundamentals behind that, Chris? Well, there's a number of things. First of all, there's some technical issues, fundamental and in geopolitical. If we look at the technical issues, frankly, we'd gone almost three years without a 10% correction. Historically, we, every 12 to 15 months, we have a 10% correction in the market. So I think it was long anticipated. It just took a little bit longer to get here. If we look back to the beginning of September, another issue on the technical side was that margin debt was at an all-time high. Right, and so margin debt is where institutional and retail investors borrow in their investment accounts to buy more stock, and they have to meet a certain threshold of comfort for the lender, and when you get a market that goes down really fast, all those stocks need to be sold quickly. Well, it was the highest level of margin debt that we'd ever seen, even, even prior to 2007 and 2008, a whole bunch of stuff needed to be sold really quickly, and that really precipitated the slide. So for the investor, Chris, does this mean it's a good time to buy? We can never actually time the markets, but there's a bit of a trough and the markets are down, say, 10%, for example. Not a bad time to get in. Well, when you compare the prices today relative to two months ago, absolutely. Uh, I still think people need to maintain a long-term view and ma maintain a focus on their investment plan. If we step back and look at some of the fundamental issues that also caused the, uh, the sell-off, you know, we had uh, weak data recently out of uh, Germany in particular, but the Eurozone ongoing. That was probably in part because of the sanctions against Russia with the Russia-Ukraine situation. That triggered a, a downgrade by the International Monetary Fund of Global Growth, which triggered a downgrade by the International Energy Agency about energy demand going forward. Price of oil has now slid down to about $80 a barrel and it's basically joined the camp of all of the rest of the commodity complex. And 80 bucks a barrel isn't bad for the consumer, of course, uh, uh, Grant. Maybe, and maybe talk about uh, what's going on in the markets now to give them the rise. Well, first of all, the, the extreme selling pressures abated. Mm -hmm. And I think people realized uh, that it really isn't the end of the world as we know it. It is a correction. It was long overdue. Many of those issues that Chris just spoke about were known but hadn't happened. Yeah. And then it happened. Uh, it's almost self-fulfilling to some sense. And then when people realize, okay, this is probably far enough or long enough, or I'm not selling here, this is too low, it stops. And then the bargain hunters, the buy the dip people, as you say, start to come in and, and they start to like the pricing again. And corporate earnings are, are, are pretty good. Apple came out with some good numbers and uh, European yeah. uh, bond markets are, are uh, the central banks buying bonds there. Yeah, we're still early on in the uh, corporate earnings for the third quarter with the S&P 500, but so far it looks like it's sort of business as usual. You know, roughly 65 to 70 percent of companies are probably going to beat analyst estimates, which is, you know, in line with the long-term averages. We'll get into the uh, Canadian, Canadian earnings in a bigger way as we get through the next uh, three, four weeks. And uh, telltale will be how the Canadian banks report towards the end of, uh, end of uh, November, actually. All right, thanks, guys. Grant, if they want to contact you, our viewers. Yeah, it's 2investmentguys.com, and we're happy to deal with questions and comments.